most of the people here uh, are here either because they're friends or they're sponsors that I use their goods and or they just wanted to see me uh, fail. So I appreciate you guys all being here. Um, the sponsors that I have brought into here are uh, all people that I like and trust. And so this event couldn't have happened without them. Um, you know, my goal for this event was just to uh, bring people together. And that's, that's been the, the, the goal for the things that I've been doing, uh, to share the passion of implant dentistry, which is my passion. And uh, this event couldn't have happened without the sponsorships in the back. So I encourage everybody to at least um, get to know them and see what they have to offer because um, they were invited here for a reason, not just, uh, not just for the sponsorship, but because um, I believe in what they do. So the rules today, there's just a couple quick rules. Um, first rule is the same as Fight Club. We do not talk about the implant MBA outside of here. No, but all, all things aside, um, I didn't. I didn't allow a lot of time for bathroom breaks. Not a whole lot of time for lunch. I want to keep things moving today. The tours yesterday went great, um, but today is where the learning is going to happen. So I'm going to I'm going to cram as much content as we can in as little time as possible. Uh, like I said, I will wrap it up at the end. Um, so if anybody has any questions at that point that they want specifically for me to answer, I will do that at that time. And the the lectures today, I wanted to condense them down to like uh, TED Talk presentations. So. Um, if you're wondering why such great speakers are getting such a little bit of time, it's because everyone here has so much to share, but we only have so much time to do it. Um, everybody here that's presenting could probably do two or three days of lecture themselves, but um, I wanted to get everybody's the, their best ideas out there and get going. So that's what the idea of today is, to get people's best ideas out of them. Like I said, everyone here, I think I have placed and used all of the products on here. Um, I think I use everything that's here. Um, the mobile 3D imaging I do not because I'm not local, but they're a good group. So if you are local, check them out. Um, cone beam imaging, all that is, is hugely important in implant dentistry. So um, if you need a good imaging system, check them out. I don't uh, take any money from any companies, so I don't have any disclaimers or anything that I need to um, you know, tell you about ahead of time. So everything up here is just my own work. And uh, I make my money treating patients, as most of you do. So that's the goal for this today, is to figure out how to treat patients, how to make implant dentistry profitable and fun. Well there, <laughs> yeah, those aren't, those aren't mine. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's a picture. Um, so I, I don't ever uh, deal with that much cash. So, my goal uh, for this event is to provoke change for dentistry, for the positive, uh, for the general dentist to take a leading role in implantology. So I am not the best implant dentist in this room, probably never will be. That's not the goal for what I'm trying to do for today. I'm trying to kind of bend the culture and break through the barriers. Um, that's why I started the podcast. That's why I started the Facebook page. That's why um, I try to do the things that I do. It's not to say that I'm the best at these. It's to say that I've been down a path I know others are going down similar paths or want to go down a path, and I want to uh, help show what those paths can be and see uh, what opportunities are out there for other people. So um, at the end of this, I want people to walk away and have the ability to make change in your practice. So this isn't about my practice today. This is about yours. So that's why we're here. Um, so the magic answer, I'm not going to tell you the magic answer today. The truth is um, there isn't one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you processes that you can put in place. And those processes, if you do them uh, and use the people and use the resources, are more, are more likely to succeed than not. So it's not about being perfect. Um, it's, about, it's about showing up and doing the work. So that's what today's all about. Um, you know, I put on here, dancing on the edge of failure is, is what keeps us alive and keeps us going. You know, implant dentistry, um, you're going to have failures. You know, you're going to learn, you're going to grow. That's an important part of it. So. Um, you, you, you got to have the, the courage and the willingness to make those changes, okay? Um, perseverance. I like to think I'm, I've never been the most talented. Um, I'd like to think I'm the, the most good looking, but that's not true either. But what I've, what I've always been is someone who's willing to put the time in and do the work. And um, dentistry is hard work. You've got to put the time in. Implantology is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So my advice is do the work. Show up, do the work. 
put in the perseverance and anything you guys want to do as possible. Um, I put on this event because when I was younger in my earlier days and I was looking for people to show me things, I would have loved to come to an event like this where I could meet like-minded people and share things and, and do this. I didn't know who to follow and where to go and I spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to figure out who to follow and where to go. And so that's what I'm trying to do is, is show people without 10 years and $100,000 of, of mistakes where to go and what to do. Everyone that I talk to in dentistry, I, I try to tell them, you know, learn to place implants. Um, even if you're not going to place implants, learn about implants because implants are the future for implant are are the future for dentistry. They're not going away. Um, so learn to place implants. That's my goal. My first implant case uh, took me an hour and a half to place this this implant. If you can imagine that, and uh, the amount of stress and fear I remember was. Uh, was, 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 was real, it was palpable. I was sweating, I didn't know what I was doing. I wish I uh, had Jack Kahn in my office that day. Um, it was actually on my father-in-law because I was so afraid I was gonna make a terrible mistake that I was gonna get sued. And I thought, well, my father-in-law won't sue me for a free dental care, right? Um, but yeah, it took me an hour and a half to place this. And I think, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, this is a case I did last week and it took me an hour and a half to place these. So the journey, doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, this this case went in in an hour and a half. Um, but I like to tell people it has nothing to do with my talent and skill. It has to do with implementing processes and learning and growing. Um, Anybody is capable of putting in and treating this case in an hour and a half if you have the right skills and the right tools. So marketing. This this uh, seminar is dental implant MBA. I don't officially have an MBA. I'd like to get one. My wife's threatened me uh, that I can't go back to school. I've, I've told her I'm going to go back and get my MBA and my law degree and all these other things. The truth is, um, you know, you need to be business minded. You need to be, um, you, you know, in dentistry, there's still a taboo about saying, oh, let's, let's figure out a way to, to get good products cheap, to make a profit. And, you know, people criticize you for talking about that. But at the end of the day is, you know, everyone in here has to make a living. We all have overhead. We all have staff to pay. Um, so I wanted to put something together that shows people how to market implant dentistry correctly, how to bring in the cases they want, uh, patients that are willing to pay. Um, I'm not a pro at this, but I've, I've done some things right and I've done some things wrong. So you're probably gonna see a little bit of both of that today. All marketing is though, is telling a story about what you're doing to people in a way that they wanna give you money. So the questions you need to ask yourself is how do you tell the story? Who do you tell the story to? And how do you create the value? Uh, and, you know, a lot of implant dentistry is value creation, it's value selling. Um, and people are buying something from you that they want. It's different than other aspects of dentistry. So my manifesto for implantology is do the work. So, you know, do it now. You know, a lot of things is like, oh, I'll do it now. You know, push things off, I'll do it later. Um, you've got to do the work. You know, you, you need to resist the urge to do average work for average people. You know, there's, there's a race to the bottom in um, general practice these days with various elements, with insurances and DSOs and corporatizing of things. You know, the race to the bottom is, is going faster and lower. You know, you don't want to be at the race to the bottom. Um, implantology is a way out of that. You want to build your skills and your assets. You know, growing to scale, owning 10 practices and, and growing a corporation, it's not always right for everybody. That doesn't have to be the goal. You need to do real work that matters for your patients and they will pay you for it. So uh, set boundaries for yourself and always be professional. Don't take it personal. Um, these are hard lessons to learn, but they're important if you want to get to the next step. So solving the problems means asking the right questions. Um, you know, how we address the questions and what, what do people want? What do they want? Um, how can you serve people? You know, you need to be constantly asking yourself questions. And the problem is, it's a lot of times we're asking the wrong questions. Um, we address things from our point of view. So when we're talking about implantology, we need to address it from the patient's point of view. What do they want? Learn to ask the right questions. Questions, better questions get better answers. So I like football, so football season just kicked off. So I, I like to try to equate everything to football. Typical guy. You have to know what to do. You have to have a good game plan. You have to be able to do it. You have to have the skills. 
You have to care enough to get hit. Um, I tell people implant anthology is a contact sport. You're going to get hit. Um, and a lot of things in life, it's not about, you know, I think, I think it was Rocky Balboa, I think, said uh, it's not about how you get hit. It's if, it's if you get up and keep going. So you will get hit in implantology, implant dentistry. Um, are you smart enough to figure out what, what the right people are saying? Are you good enough to do what you need to do? And do you care enough to get hit and keep moving? Those are three important things that I think you need to understand. And then just do it. You know, people have a lot of excuses. Nobody is the master when they begin. Um, it's a journey, it's a progression. So learn that and understand that. I've made a lot of mistakes in life. I've made a lot of mistakes in ministry. Uh, keep charging forward, keep growing, keep learning. Effort is always available. So that's the one thing you can't run out of. I'm gonna get into some good stuff here. I know this is a lot of overhead, but just hang in there with me. The tools, so everyone wants to look at, you know, special equipment and fancy things these days. I love tools, I love tricks, I love tips. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's all they are because eventually everyone's gonna have those. And the things that you think are separating you today and making you special, everyone will own tomorrow. So don't think your tools are gonna make you a better dentist. Don't think your tools are gonna make you a better person. Eventually everyone's gonna have them. Develop skills so that when someone says, you cost a lot of money and you can look them in the eye and say, I do, and you're gonna get more than you pay for. Because that tool never goes out of style. People are gonna pay you for that tool. Your cone beam will eventually be archaic, but your tools to develop caring, empathetic, qualified, competent skills, you know, those things are always in demand. So develop those. So accept the fact that your tools are not unique and eventually you can say, I have a cone beam, I'm a special person, I'm the only implantologist in town that has that. In 10 or 20 years ago, that might have been true. And in 20 years, we're all gonna laugh at the technology we're using now. So don't think that the technology and the tools are gonna separate you. Learn to craft your communication skills, your leadership skills, and the art and science of dentistry. So put your investment in your skills and your communication. Here's some of the tools that I like though. I do like tools. So I love um, my Tatum Easy Outs. I love my Cone Beam. I love my electric torque wrench. I love the Versa Burrs. I'm not saying tools aren't great, but always be chasing the next tool. Always be learning about new developments. And that's kind of what we have here today. We've got some people that have some really neat stuff. Get the newest and latest thing. It is an investment, but don't lean on it as a crutch. So what we need to do in our industry is establish value, right? We need to put in the ability to have emotional labor, okay? The ability to calm down a panicked client, to bail yourself out of the jam. These are tools you need to develop. When I was young in my career, I didn't have them. And the ability to get yourself in and out of situations as they come up is, is important because situations will come up. And having the right team there to help you with that. So enhance your technical skills, grow into what you need to do. I took this slide, I think this is Paul Homily's leadership communication curve. Most of you probably know who Paul is. He's a, a big speaker in implant dentistry. This is not my information, it's his. But I've listened to every book he has. I've, 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 re I've read every book he has. I've listened to his audio books 100 times. He's a great speaker and he knows how to sell implant dentistry. So if you haven't, if you haven't read and listened to his stuff, you need to learn it. But what I like about his, he talks about the leadership curve and breaking through the wall and selling high cases. So on the left, we've got tooth dentistry and anybody can sell a crown to somebody with an insurance that's in pain, but not everybody can sell a $50,000 dual arch case because it takes mastery and skill and leadership. So how do we get from the left side, insurance dependent tooth dentistry to the right side, complex care implantology? That's what we're all going for. Along the way, you need to have building up all of these things. You need to have patient financing. You need to have marketing. You need to have customer service. You need to establish yourself as a specialist. Those are all important things to be doing right side of the wall dentistry. Cases over 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on a daily basis. You're not going to have that having average communication skills. You're not going to get that having average staff. You're not going to have that unless you can look at a patient in the eye and tell them you're going to deliver a product. So. People buying the right side of the wall 
over that five, ten, twenty thousand dollar mark on trust and emotion, not information. So showing people slides and telling them about this and that and talking to them about you know the details of, of things aren't always what they want. They want to look at you and say, I don't have teeth. You know. Uh, you know, I've been in an abusive relationship. I've I've, re I've recovered from uh, uh, an alcoholism disease. I've I've come from this, I've come from that. And so you're rehabilitating them past an emotion. You're giving them hope in the future. So learn to talk to people about that, not you know the, the cuspid rise and the curve of speed. Nobody cares about that. So pick an industry where you're welcome. Go where you want to go. Implantology hasn't always been as welcoming to general dentists. So that's my goal is to continue to kick through that. But go where you need to go. You need to get... You don't need to please the maximum amount of people. The, the idea that we need to serve everybody isn't, isn't the right idea. We need to serve a smaller number of clients better. We don't need the masses. And so what, what big box marketing ideas like to tell you is so you can be everything to everybody and I'll build you a custom website or a, 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 a website off the box and you can be everything to everybody. That's not the truth. You know, I used to think I could do that and you're just not gonna do that. And that's really not where the real payoff for emotional labor and skilled labor and financial reward is. The, the emotional labor is finding a small market who wants what you have and is willing to pay you for what you do well. So that's what we want to establish today. Make it clear what you do and and with your marketing message. You know, be clear who you are. And I'll show you some of those things that I do. It's time for the boomers. You know, my marketing is, is mostly directed at boomers um, because that's the group I want to serve. So when I think about who I'm serving and where my marketing goes to it's at a very specific group it's not everyone I'm not trying to restore 20 year olds mouths I want to look at 50 year olds 60 year olds 70 year olds with failing ministry and rehabilitate them in a way that they're that they're wanting and, and needing the services that I'm providing so commit to the process to the uh, discipline of prospecting um, you know people always want to say well how do you get these cases how are you doing what you're doing it's 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 not a you know, you don't want to be on the rise and the fall. If you if you wait until your work is done to go chase your next project, you're going to have highs and lows. So what you only need to do is continually prospecting work. You know, in different areas and different markets, that means a lot of things. But you need to be constantly looking and be okay selling yourself. Be okay being an advocate for yourself. Okay? Your work's not going to be for everybody, and that's okay. You know, you have to accept the fact that some people are going to value your work and some people aren't. Move on. That's okay. So, you want to be in a category of one. And I joke about this. You know, I just did a, uh, a video shoot with uh, Progressive Marketing here in the back last week. And the guys that came out, we were making a joke. I posted on the group. I'm not sure if anybody even watched that stuff. But I said, you know, I want to be the king of implant dentistry in uh, Kansas City. I was partly joking, but I was partly serious because I want people to say in, in my area of town, oh, you need to go get dental implants. I don't want that. I want people to say, you need to go see Philip Gordon and get dental implants because he's the king of implant dentistry. Now, I hope they don't actually say that. And I'm not that arrogant. But I want, that's the goal, is to be known in, you want to be the best in the world at what you do. And what's, what's the best in the world? The best in the world doesn't mean the world. It might mean your zip code. It might mean your corner of town. I mean, in, in uh, Manhattan, Kansas, it might mean the whole state. But in Manhattan, New York, it might mean one small block. But you want to own that block. You want to own that market. You want to be in that category of one for where you're at. And so you need to define how to get there. That's the goal. Be comfortable advocating yourself and build relationships in a way that no one else can. Because people are buying you for the relationships and the value that you're promising. And then you do need to be able to deliver that as well. So own your work. You know, be comfortable looking someone in the eye and say, yes, I can fix this. It's going to cost a lot, but you'll get more than you pay for. You need to be comfortable quoting your own fees. You know, I have a great treatment coordinator. Most of you know her, Keely. She could probably sell anything to anybody, but she knows I can deliver it, too. And if patients do look at me and say, what's this going to cost? I quote them a fee. As I, always, I, was, I haven't always been comfortable doing that in my career. It took me a while to get to that point. But I value my work enough to say it's going to cost this much. You need to be comfortable doing that. And if you don't believe it and, and you can't project it, then they're not going to either. And so when you pull up the chair and have the knee to knee with that person, you need to go look them in the eye and say, this is what it costs, and we're going to take care of you. Get better clients, not more clients. And so that's the goal of marketing, right? How do we get better clients? 
do exceptional work, you're going to get better patients. So working harder, everybody, you know, I talk about effort. I'm alone and not work anybody in the gym, in the, in the bar, you know, whatever. I cannot drink you, I cannot lift you, I cannot run you. I mean, at a certain point, the body starts to fail, right? You can't always outwork yourself. So the goal for some of this is, you know, do less work, get paid more. That's what I like about implantology is, you know, it's still a segment of dentistry where you can do that. You know, you can only do so many DO fillings and composites in a day and get beat down. But, you know, my favorite days are the ones I showed you where I, you know, can slick in 12 implants before noon. You know, go for a run at lunch, come back, have a couple of Red Bulls and check some hygiene patients, right? Those are my favorite days. It's not the days where I'm hunched over worrying about creating contacts, you know, with DO fillings on number 30. A couple of quick concepts I want to cover is the network effect. So the idea is that people want to be part of a system. You know, there's all these things about choosing the right implant and the right implant system and, and creating connections and things like that. You know, you want to look at things that people are using that everyone's using. You know, the, the companies I bring in here are, are good companies because a lot of people use them. Are they good because a lot of people are using them or are a lot of people using them because they're good? Sometimes those go hand in hand. Um, you don't want to be the only one using the one thing you're doing because there's a lot of sunk costs in some things, right? So um, the investment that you put into your tools and your systems, make sure they can transfer. So when I started placing implants, I started placing, I believe it was the uh, Nobel Replace. Um, Jack, I'm sure you're familiar with that one. So, I, but I was using the one with the conical connection because I started off that case because the trilobe's dying. And why do I want to use a trilobe? You know, it doesn't make sense. The conical connection seems like a better, I don't know, I didn't know anything about connections back then. And just, well, well, this one, you know, shares a connection with this and shares a connection with that. So, well, that makes sense. I'll use that. But as you go on, you look at some costs. So, what, so is there something in your cabin in your head keeping you from a better system? So, what if, what if a better system comes along, right? There's always going to be a new system. But what these companies and what these systems and what the marketing behind some of these systems try to do, they try to lock you into a system, right? And they say, I'll give you the kit and I'll give you the implants free. I'll give you, the, you know, your first batch for half. And then they know they've got you locked in because you're going to keep buying that lousy system because it's the only connection and the only system that works. And if you don't do that, you've got all this time and money wrapped up in a system that you can't change. There's no lateral shift. So I always tell people, pick a system that's GP friendly. Pick a system that your labs can use and pick a system that has lateral flexibility. So there's a lot of good systems that have that. Bio Horizons has that. Jack Hans Implant have that. A lot of other companies have that. You know, it doesn't mean it has to be a clone. It just means that it can have a compatible system. So your labs can pick anything off the bench top, plug it in, and play. Because if your lab's got to go buy a $600 a button, every time you place this implant, your costs go up. And then when you, something better comes along and you want to shift, you're going to spend 20 grand changing all your equipment to do so. So don't get locked in. That's what the manufacturers want to do. It's like when you go buy a Volvo and you can only get the tires changed at the Volvo place because no one else has those wrenches. That doesn't make sense, right? So buy your Toyota, buy your Chevy, take them anywhere down the street. Anybody can change the oil. So don't get boxed in. Don't let them pencil you into a corner. It's just a marketing scheme. So the idea of openness, I'm not going to beat that anymore. Keep your systems open. That was Implant Direct's idea. And they came out and they said, our stuff works just as good as theirs because our systems are compatible. I'm not going into implants today about which is the best and which is that. But that's why, that's why they took off when they did. Not only did they keep it open to buy, they kept it open platform. Ours have the same platform, ours work too. I'm not getting into that, but the idea works. So don't get stuck sinking a bunch of money into systems that don't work. Raise the standard of care. Don't try to dumb down what we're doing in implant dentistry. The race to the bottom isn't one you want to win, and you definitely don't even want to come in second, right? So raise the standard of care. We want to race to the top, not to the bottom. So we want to be exclusive, right? How do we become exclusive? It's not always about the money. You want to be the best at what you do, and then you'll get paid the money. So. How do we get patients to believe our service is worth more than it costs? That's what we want, because if, if we're providing a service that's expensive, but it's worth more than it costs, people are going to pay us for it, right? So 
go back to start with the why. I think that's a Simon Sinek book. Um, 10 years ago, it's still true, right? The people need to understand your why too, and that's your marketing message. So the patients need to understand your passion about implantology, your professionalism, your skill about implantology. So go back to that. Your core business needs to reflect that, whether it's your website, whether it's your staff, whether it's your decor, you need to come back to your why, right? So I'm gonna do a quick run through. Um, you know, obviously the Marvel and the, the comics and all that, I don't even know, I don't even know what the groups are, DC and, but it's not, you know, some people probably know that better, but I go back to the hero story, right? And I was putting this slide together. Some days I can't tell if I'm, uh, if I can relate more to Superman or, or uh, Batman, because, you know, some days you have good days and you feel like Superman, and some days you have bad days and you feel more like uh, Batman running in the shadows like everyone's after you. But I think every story, you know, the hero starts somewhere, right? And we want to be our own heroes in our life. You know, you need to be the hero in your own life. So something always happens to the hero. Um, and, then, and then after that point, you make a choice. You know, for me it was, I joined my father's practice and I thought I wanted to do cosmetic dentistry like him. And then I got to a point where I thought, this isn't right for me. I need to explore other opportunities. I need to open new doors. And so an opportunity opened for me with implant dentistry. Something has to happen, but then after that something happens and you realize this isn't my path, you have to make a conscious choice to go down a new road. So what happens to our hero? Well, it's up to you. So my origin story, I graduated dentistry in 2009. I knew very little about implantology. I knew very little about life. I knew very little about dentistry, to be completely honest with you. About 60 or 70% of what I do now in my practice is implant related. So most of my days, I'm doing most of my work on implants. Um, I, I would never have expected that in my graduated dentistry in 2009. I did not want to place implants. I remember telling people I have no interest in placing implants. And today I have no interest in cutting teeth. So how do we get to that point? My goal of dental implant practice is platform is to break down the barriers for general dentists and implantology. That's been the goal for day one. Um, because I think the general dentist can and should be involved with the heart of implantology. So for me, where it all started, I look back at that picture and think, God, I look so young, but that's my wife and my uh, oldest son. And, you know, going back, it was an interesting journey. I started the podcast. Oh, okay, so I wanted to get FaceTime, right? I remember looking back at some of my old notes and I was like, FaceTime, FaceTime. I remember writing about FaceTime before FaceTime was a thing. And back then it used to mean getting, actually getting in front of people. It didn't mean calling somebody on a phone and texting and being on Facebook. I remember when FaceTime actually meant you get in front of people and you put your, you put your face out there. That's where it starts. And I still think that's true today. That's why I wanted to put this event together. And said, well, you can do everything online. You don't have to lecture you into this. But I believe the, the, the idea of getting in front of people and sharing your story and relating with them is important. So that's part of why I wanted to do this event because I think that's where you truly learn. In 2010, my journey started for implantology. The first five years were rough, so we're not even gonna go through those. But in 2015, I started the podcast, here's me, you know, trying to be official. Um, here's Gary Takis. Here's a couple of the, uh, the superheroes I'm talking to about the story, a couple of the AID faculty. So FaceTime for me meant showing up and it going to the right conventions. It means trying to get in front of the people who are the true leaders in implant dentistry and trying to learn from them. Because opening a book and watching an online video is great, but I thought I need to get in front of the right people. And so that was my journey. This is me and Chris Barrett and Michael Jackson at the Las Vegas Maxi course. So we hit the Michael Jackson experience and unfortunately I posted this on uh, on my podium and he got more votes so he's got better dancing skills than me but you know what it's okay i still try i still think i'm bad so that's all right not a big deal you're gonna be your own superhero in your head my story is i bought a practice in 2014. it was a prosthodontic practice it was a female dentist and she was working three days a week she had two days of hygiene and the practice was collecting 220 or 240 thousand dollars a year but it was in the right part of town, and I thought I can put some sweat equity in this thing and make it work. 
So I bought my Frost Practice. I didn't even know it was a Frost Practice when I bought it, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Shows what I know, right? I know a lot of things now. I wish I knew then. So here I am buying it. Here's a little fall festival I used to run in my yard um, for the kids. Just showing having some fun. But um, after that, I knew that I wanted to relocate. So I started, I started going to every place I could learning about practice, right? Where to go, where to learn, take the best, take the worst. The Corvette project. I was trying to grow my patient base. I bought a 1988 Corvette and had a new patient referral program. I gave away that car to the patient at the end of six months who referred me the most patients. I think the, I think the person who wanted a car only referred me in like six patients. <laughs> but I was trying. I, w I wasn't afraid to fail, you know. The car cost, cost me 10 grand. I, I'm, I'm lucky if I recoup that, but in those six months I burnt the hell out of the rubber on those suckers. My kids had a lot of fun. And to this day, they still say, Dad, I wish you still had that Corvette. I said, son, I need to. So here they are in 2015 there. So they're, they're a couple years older. But you can see the excitement in their eyes. They love that car. And uh, it was a lot of fun. But you know what? I heard somebody did it once. I thought, you know, I can do that. I, this, this will grow my practice. It didn't work. <laughs> That's OK. Um, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to take leaps of faith. So I knew my practice lease was running out, and I thought, you know what, I need to make a move. I need to go where the action is. So I did my research. I found out the people I wanted to serve. I moved to an area of town that was highly populated with those kind of people. Who are those people? It's the boomers. It's the people with money. It's the people with wants. It's the people with desires. It's the people with need. It's the blue collar people. Those are the people I serve. You know, people are like, oh, you do all these implant cases. You must be working on movie stars. I live in Kansas City, guys. We don't have movie stars. So people show up to jobs. They have money. They don't have money. They still come into my office state, but they want things, and they're willing to work and pay for them. So those are the people we want to attract. So move. my office was in the right part of town, so I moved it. You know, everyone's got an excuse. So go, oh, my, uh, my practice is in the wrong side of town. I don't have that kind of practice. Sell it. Move your practice. Moving to the right part of town, take an investment. It's a leap of faith. Do it. Because if you stay in the path you are now and you're not happy with it, where are you going to be in 10 years? 10 years unhappier is where you're going to be. Don't be afraid to take a leap of faith. You know, but, but take your leap of faith based on your vision and purpose. My vision and purpose was very clear. So for me, it wasn't a risk. You know, everyone's like, well, you're crazy. You're, you're, you're going to pay this off. You got that. You got another kid on the way. You just give away a Corvette. Why are you building a practice? I knew it's what I needed to do, so I did it. So here's, you know, we're building out, we're digging out. Stressful times. It's not easy building a practice. It's not easy moving a practice. Especially when you got people clinging on you, counting on you. You know, it's not easy to do. Be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to take risks. What we have today, you know, we have a beautiful office. I'd like to be able to take credit for all the things here, but you know, I work with a lot of people smarter than me. But I went out and I toured a million offices. You know, and I flew all over the country to these office seminars, and I went everywhere, and then I thought, you know what, I can do this. So, go about what you want. Make things how you want it, because, you know, life is going to pull you in a lot of directions. You have to be very purposeful with your practice. Here's my consult room. People say, how do you do your consults? I put them in a fancy room, I close the door with Keely, and I walk away. Mm -hmm. And I come back, and the dentistry sold. I don't know what she does in there. I've got a... But I have a nice office and I've got nice staff, so people must think I do good dentistry, right? And I, I'd like to believe that I do. So I try to organize everything nicely, right? So when patients come in, you know, I'm a big fan of models. Um, usually the ones in swimsuits, but these are important to have too. These are from Salvin, they work great. These are the cheapest models you can get because when you put them in front of people and you talk about bone loss, it's real. So sometimes, you know, having little visual aids in there is great. I think some of these you can pick up from different places. I think Glidewall sells a kit like this now. You can get the all on four stuff pretty easy. But, you know, put the dentistry in their hands and say, this is an overdenture. It's plastic. Snap it in and off the model. This is the porcelain model. And I went to Jack's practice. He'd, he'd, he'd bang that porcelain thing. I think he threw it on the floor. He'd pick it up and say, this is what I'm putting in your mouth. I wish you wouldn't do that. I said, yeah. this is what we're going to do. Right. Yeah. You throw it on the floor and they, they get it. These teeth won't break. You know, that makes an impact on people. So, so, so get the appropriate models. 
I think I got these from, uh, I think uh, Garg sells these. He's got some nice stuff. Um, you know, veneers, you know. Occasionally I like prepping veneers. I never like seating veneers. Um, but people want to see stuff. Um, Teeth Express. You know, I, I, I'm not a Teeth Express provider, but I love this magazine. BioHorizons is doing a hell of a job with patient promotions. Um, they will help you promote your business. Here's me building out my office. I'm way behind. When I said be the best in the world, this is my world. Right in the middle is where my office is at. Right here. These people are my world. So that's who I want to be number one in the world. Because <laughs> I don't care what people out in California think about my dentistry in Kansas City. They're not flying to see me. Be the best in the world to your people. So how do you do that? Uh, I did mailers. You know, at first it was just to get butts in the chair. And so I call it, you know, this and that. And it's not, I just need a butt in the chair. That's when I tell my patients, I mean, whether it's, you know, whatever. I just I need a butt in the chair. So at first you just, first you have to kind of please everybody because you, you just got to pay the rent. Um, mailer ads can work. I've done mailer ads for generic dentistry. I've done mailer ads for implant dentistry. I've done mailer ads to get people to implant seminars. They can work. But you need to have the right team to do them right. So you just can't put any crap out there. You know, make sure your staff looking nice. Make sure you're sending it to the right people. It's old, it's dead, but look at the population. The population I want to serve still checks their mail. They still read the newspaper. When they get on social media, it's probably something the old people are on, like Facebook or, I don't know. But I don't know what the kids do and I don't care because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not treating kids. So, uh, Gary put this together for me when I did a podcast with him. He quoted me, you know, the, the key to success is to do what you love. And for me, that's the only thing. So the idea for success for me is to be an implantology. That's how I base my success. So the process, you know, you got to go through a lot of things. Suturing, you got to go through training. Here's me and Howie. You know, love this guy. He's a little crazy, but aren't we all? Chris Barrett, Shank Ryer, Birba, Ray, me, good friends I met at, that, at the Maxi course. You know, you got to show up. You got to put your time in. Here's me. It's all about the cash, right? For the first two or three years of my practice, I never took a paycheck. I turned it all back into the practice. So, I, you know, this about the practice we did. They were doing two hundred thousand a year. I think this year we're going to do two million. For three years, I didn't take any money out of that practice. I spent it all right back in the practice. When I get a big case, I would go put a hundred thousand more mailer ads out. When I got a big case, I put more in a Google pay per click. When I got a big case, I upgraded my website. So everybody wants to make the buck and put it in their pocket and buy a Corvette and all those fancies. Put it in the practice. Invest in your marketing. Invest in your skills. Those investments will pay off, right? I drive a 10-year-old car. I don't drive anything fancy. Invest in the company. Don't spin off the cash. Put it back in the company. That's how you grow your business. Invest in the people. Pay them well. Find good people. Pay them well. Hold on to them. Here's me in the Implant Pathways. Justin Moody, a good guy. If you don't know him, get to know him. He'll show you everything he knows. We did the tour. These pictures are from a couple years ago. I've been at the Precision One many times. Zimmer Biomet Training Center. I'd like to think I've been everywhere, done everything. Like, uh, was it Johnny Cash things? That's on I've been everywhere, man. I'd like to think I have. I haven't yet. I haven't done much East Coast yet, just because the people out there scare me. <laughs> But I like the West Coast because it's fun, it's the sun. My, my wife, who's not here, usually likes to travel with me. She's mad at me right now because she's not here. These companies, go see them. You want to know about their implants, go see them. You want to know about what they're doing, go see them. That's, that's what we set up yesterday. I'm trying to show you things that I think are valuable. Maybe you'll place their implants, maybe you won't. But go see them. FaceTime. You know, it, it used to mean showing up to places, so show up in life. Jim Gladwell. I like to think if I keep buying enough Han implants, he's going to introduce me to Jim one day, but I don't think it's going to happen. I just want to get on a yacht, really, is what I want, just once. But the tour yesterday, you know, I don't know who uses Glidewell in here. I don't know what your thoughts are of them, but I hope you learned something yesterday. Um, Zest Anchors, great company. They're out in California, too. Go see them. Bureau, they're in your backyard. Go see them. So here's me and me. I'm open my new practice. I had a cardboard cutout made of me. I stuck it in the window right up front, just waving to people. And, I, and, I, and then I'd write goofy stuff in here. You know, and people thought I was nuts, but 
you know, people walk by, they laugh, and then they come and make an appointment. So don't be afraid to be silly. Everybody wants to be uptight, you know, and serious all the time. Here's me and uh, Paresh Patel, and uh, here's here's Chris Barrett wearing the Gordon Dental glasses. You can't tell, but we needed eye protection that day, so I said, "Let's put on the Gordon Dental shades." So I, I had about a, you know 500 of these shades made up, and I would just give them out to my patients. I thought, you know, it's, it's wrap around marketing, right? I'm always looking for something silly. I'm, I'm not afraid to try silly things. Here's me and Pei Ray, good guy. People I meet along the way. This is with the uh, sinus meeting out here this spring. AID Sinus 2.0 met some fun people. It was at the big venue. They got a bigger paycheck than I do. But we had a lot of fun. It was at the same convention. That's why I thought, you know, I can come back here and do something one day. Dr. Minichetti, Dr. Shanker Iyer, guys that are, you know, doing a lot of good things for the implant dentistry. Great guys. If you don't know them, get to know them. If you haven't taken a course, just go see them somewhere. These guys are who you need to meet. You know, I. I talk a lot, I do a lot of funny things, but these are the guys that know what they're doing. Dr. Bernie Dunson, great guy. Go check him down, he's in Atlanta. He's doing amazing things. He just opened up a new maxi course. Here's me and Barrett. I've got a baby stroller and a baby bag. We're in Vegas, we were trying to you know, pretend like we're doing uh, what's the, the Hangover movie, but I'm actually pushing a baby in here. I got my baby in uh, Vegas at the maxi course. This guy's in the audience here somewhere. Alvarez here. You know, just, just get out and meet people. Um, Dr. Chong. Me and Jack. You know, I love this guy here. Um, went to go see him in his office. It was old office. He's got a new office now. But he'll, he'll welcome me in his office. I wanted to see the guy play some plants. You know, the legend. And, you know, he'll, he'll have... Uh, he's probably forgotten more about implant dentistry than I'll ever know. And... Um, you know, an amazing person. Go learn from the go learn from the best. Um, fun trip we got to take this spring. Go see Dr. Hill Tatum. You know, teaching Paris. I thought, what a better way to, you know, reward my wife for putting up with me and take her to Paris. And, and if I can spend a week with Hill Tatum, good, you know, good for me. And I'm showing you things not to brag about this, but this is my story. And these these are how I've learned is to to get in front of people that know what they're doing and to try to approach them and say. Can you, can you can you share with me what can you know what what what, what can you share with me and what are you willing to share and go to people that are willing to share because some people are willing to share and some people are not and that's the reality of it. find people who are willing to share who uh, are willing to teach and willing to invest in you because not everybody is where's it all headed I don't know where it's all headed um, my wife here's my baby I love there's Ben Jack we got another one on the way so four kids I don't know where it's headed um, but I, I know implant dentistry is going to be along the way. So, how do you get so? How do you get from zero to forged dentistry? You know, it's it's it, it's a path. You know, everyone wants to you know how, how do I get to doing these cases? Well, I mean, it's, I did a million single implants bad before I did one right, and then you know did a million right before I did a forged case. So it's a journey. Um, so the question I want to ask is, what's your origin story? I'm going to start flipping through these real quick because I'm cutting into Jack's time now. So. Everyone's get hung up on perfect. Okay, where are we going to go? Everyone wants to get hung up on perfect surgeries, though, and um, especially now with the Facebook group I created, it's, it's it's half a monster as it is a good thing now because everyone's oh your your angle's two percent off and this and that. Every surgery is not perfect. Life isn't perfect. Focus on doing more surgeries and getting better every day. So, I like to assume nobody's got extraordinary talent. I mean, there's a small there's a small niche to do. Most people get there by showing up and doing the work. So. So, you know what, skills are what you need to focus on. Focus on your skills. So do the hard things first. So I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip through this. Do your job. You know, that's what Bill Belichick always says, do your job. You know, do the hard work first. Everyone wants to come in and play around in the office. If there's if there's marketing, if there's hard things to do, if there's hard decisions that they make, make them early in the day, make them early in your career. Because if you struggle now and get through the struggles now, it'll pay off in the future. Starting a business, starting all this, is like being an architect. You need to have a plan. You need to start developing that plan before you put it in execution. So start with the plan, the dip. It's not just doing implant practices. So there's the hard work. You're, you're gonna go through periods where you don't see the return. And it's in that dip, it's in that valley where most people quit. And on the other side of the dip is the, is the top of the mountain. And so you have to be willing to push through the dip. So, if it was easy, everyone would do it. It's not. 
how do you bring implants to market? But I talked about this, you don't have to be the best in the world, you just have to be perceived as the best in the world in your market. Let's define what your market is. Press past the dip. You know, you need to understand if you're starting out and you've not placed a lot of implants or you don't have an implant boat practice, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's a three to five year process, at least. For me it was. Maybe some people can speed that up for me. But you know, you, you need to have somebody who's in charge of helping you figure out the money. You need to have you need to be able to make uh, a new patient coordinator. I said, I'll tell Keely, so I said, you go promise them I can do anything in the world and I'll do it. And she knows that I can. So, because I need to be the boss. I, I can't worry about all the details. I, I, need to, I need to be at the execution level. You need to have people who can run your, your plan for you. You need to have people who will tell you the truth. And if, and if I'm off my game or if I'm off my guard, my staff will call me out on it. They'll tell me. You know, you need to learn to code. Um, building and coding is important. I forgot a slide in here, but um, you know you need to understand these things because it's always changing. But what we like to do is we like to bundle things in our office. So we, we have packages. I'll kind of go through some of that. Here's Row Lab. Um, I had the video going earlier in case you guys are curious what that was. They send you a tackle box and you, you slug in a bunch of implants. It's a great place. And it's a guided bone reduction and implant placement. So those are on implants over a uh, PMMA temp. You know, everybody's always asking and trying to figure out what the best screw is. I was, you know, for me, find one that works in your hands and stick with it. It's not always about tinkering with um, the minutia. And everyone's want to tell you that their surface treatment's the best and their uh, micro this and that's good. Find a good system and stick with it. If you're getting good results, focus on the big picture. I love them, thank Concierge. They do great surgical guides. I love Bottle Horizons because they have good products. I've seen their plant, they have good people. So, Give them a try. For me in my office, I like to bundle things in a basically kind of three or four packages. You come into my office, you, you have one or two teeth missing. What's that mean? Well, you know, you've got an implant fee, 1800 bucks, custom abutment, implant crown. You're looking at 400 or four grand maybe, right? And if I need a surgical guide, that's uh, that's another 500, so that's 4,500. You know, you got some office overhead. I got my Han implants at 160, healing abutment, impression coping, custom abutment, fracture crown. My costs eight or nine hundred bucks, so I can, you know, I can do thirty-two hundred dollars in profit, right? You know, for me in my office now, that's thirty minutes placing the implant, and you know, twenty minutes that's getting the patient home. So this is a profitable procedure. This is what we need to get to. We need to get this down to a profitable procedure, you know, because if if you're using the wrong companies and you're taking too much time, you won't make any money at it. Because for the first couple of years, I didn't. I, you know, I was placing no bell. Then it took me two hours to place an implant. You think I was making any money? I do four implant locator interventions. I don't do two. They rock. Patients come in. They say, "You said this was, was going to stay still, and it doesn't. It still rocks." So I don't even offer two locator implant uh, ventures. I do four implant over ventures or six. Uh, I do four on the floor or six fixed. I, do, I don't do two. Um, people want solutions. They don't. I mean, they, they don't care what. You know, they want their teeth snap in. When you tell them you're going to give them a, an implant denture, they, they assume it's not going to move. So, I profit, you know, I charge, uh, we're, we're charging close to $17,000 for these, which is a whole bunch of money for teeth that are still plastic, and I get that. But, you know, you can make thirteen, fourteen thousand $14,000 in these cases, and there's a lot of these people walking around out there with bad dentures who are willing to pay you that. If you're taking someone from teeth to over dentures, they're going to be disappointed. If you're taking somebody from dentures to over dentures, they're going to love you. So find the people who have bad fitting dentures, upgrade them to over dentures, they're their hero. If you take them from teeth to over dentures, they're going to always be disappointed. Uh, I don't do a lot of mill bar locators, they just cost too much. I don't do a lot of four implant over dentures or hybrids because uh, the teeth break off. I don't do hybrids, I, I, I don't even offer them. I do brux or full large prosthesis. I don't care what kind of porcelain you use, for towels, zit town, whatever, I don't care. Porcelain. Tell them it's fixed, tell them it's gonna look good, tell them it's not gonna chip, tell them it's not gonna stain. Patients, you know, I mean, patients run from, they, they don't ask me what implants I place, they don't ask me what kind of porcelain I use, they say, does it stay in the mouth, does it come out? Is it plastic, is it porcelain? We charge close to $25,000, which, you know, might be low, might be high, I don't know. It's where I need it to make my profit, I've run through my numbers, that's what I charge. I know what my time's worth, I know what my costs are. Um, that's, that's what I've got to charge to make money. And let's not pretend like we're not in a business, right? We all want to serve people. We all want to help people. But I don't see, I, is anybody in here uh, working at non-for-profit? Is anybody in here working for a, 
you know, a, a government agency where you get paid to do nothing all day? I mean, I don't think we are. That's why we're here. Try something new. Don't be afraid to try something new. You've got to take a leap of faith every now and then. This is from the photo shoot we did. I'm not going to work because I'm showing too much of my hairy chest here. But you've got to have a great team. You've got to invest in the right people. This guy right here. You've got to have the right team. I, I, I can't do any of this stuff like I, I, my, my lab guy does. I, I don't pretend to do it. You know, everyone's making their own guides and this and that anymore. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. It's not for me. I find the right team. I know what I can do. I know my skills. I put the right people around me, and I stay in my profit zone. That's what I do. If you like to make guides, go for it. If you like to make your own implants, I don't care. It's not what I do. Put the team around you. You need to succeed. Get people you can trust. Pay them well, and it pays off. So be the captain. Um, your implant industry is changing, and it's sliding. Some of it's sliding in the wrong direction. Um, be the captain of your own crew. Be the captain of your own ship. So don't be allowed to take risks. Don't be afraid to take risks. The referral system, there's a lot of things broken about the old referral system. Um, well, we won't go into that. That's why I place implants. <laughs> That's what motivated me to place implants, the brokenness of the referral system. It's not that they weren't being placed, right? These patients weren't getting it done. Most of them don't go to the referrals. I think I did, a, I looked up a study. 50% of people don't even go to the referral. Another 25% of that don't go through the treatment. And then it's, it's just a trickle down. Pa patients weren't getting implants. So I thought, you know what? I need to do it. Do work that matters. Um, I, you know, I can't do fillings all day every day for the rest of my life. I want to do something more significant than that. Infant dentistry can help change people's lives. Customer acquisition. How do you bring in the right customer? What's your feeder channel? That's what you need to be asking yourself. I can't tell you exactly what's going to work for you. I can tell you what works for me in my market, but you need to figure out, you know, things that you're going to go through struggling with as you're going through this journey is will, the, will these things work and is this what I'm supposed to do? And there's a lot of times I was going through my journey, I didn't know if any of this was going to work. I didn't know if it was going to be right for me. But you got to believe in what you're doing. And you got to be willing to ask yourself the hard questions. I don't know if it's going to work, but just because other people are you know, buying a bunch of offices and trying to spin them off and sell them to corporate in 10 years doesn't mean you have to. It's not the model I'm going after. I mean, that's great and everybody wants to talk about, you know, owning 15 practices these days. It just sounds like 15 problems I don't need. You know, for me, have the hard conversations early. Whatever decision you're going to make about your practice, there's going to be compromises. Just know what those compromises are and be willing to deal with them. Start with your why. I think we'll go through that. Here's the secret for it now. That's all you need to know about marketing. So, these are the people I want to serve. What pond are they swimming in? What am I putting on the hook? But it's not just about hooking them. Because I want to take them to the top of the mountain. The top of the mountain for them might be a lot of different things. It might be chewing the function. It might be smiling for the wedding. It might be having teeth for a lifetime. But this is the secret formula. So you need to start with, who am I trying to serve? Clearly define that. Figure out where they're at. Are they in newspapers? Are they in Facebook? Are they in those, uh, those nice papers that the city makes, you know, with the, the, the hot foods and whatever? Are they, you know, where are they? I, I don't know where they're at in your city, but figure out where they're at. Find somebody who can find that for you. Have the right kind of bait to put in front of them. Because people are buying these kind of dentistry on emotion. Like we talked about. Old media, old media versus new media. So there's direct mail. You know, sometimes that can still work, but you know, is it email? Um, is it Facebook? TV, YouTube, radio, podcast, newspaper, blogs. Media channels, they're changing. Always be evaluating. Where are the fish in the pond? Are they still in this? Some of them are. Some of these are old, but they still work. So it depends on your target. Benchmarking. You know, I was always asking about these various benchmarks. You need to look at your benchmarks. You know, click-through rates. I think the average click-through rate for healthcare on Google Ads is 3.4. You know, some of my some of my ads are there. If they're working, I keep them working. If not, I take them off and put money where they're where they're working. So 
ideas are like riders, right? They need a medium to be traveled through. So the medium is the channel that you put them on. So we need to define, is this a good idea? And what are you connecting it to to make it travel? Those are the two things you need to look at with your marketing. So another thing about the implant dentistry, you know, there's an old study years ago about the marshmallows, and they put kids in a room. I think they were kindergartners, and they put a marshmallow in front of them, and they said, I'm going to leave the room, and I'm going to come back in five minutes, and if you don't eat the marshmallow, when I come back, I'm going to give you two marshmallows. And so, obviously, some of the kids, you know, were, were very, uh, if anybody has kids, you know how kindergartners are. Some of the kids ran away right away and ate that marshmallow as fast as they can. And for me and my kid, that'd be Jack, and he'd grab that thing right out of my hand and eat that in two seconds flat. And then there's the other kids that sit there and stare at them and knew that if they just had the patience, that, that, that they'd get two marshmallows in, in five minutes when they came back in the room. And so then they followed them for 40 years and they found out the ones that didn't eat the marshmallow were more successful, had happier marriages, went to higher uh, Yales and all this and that. But in our careers, a lot of you early on in life did not take the marshmallow. That's why you ended up going to dental school. That's why you ended up getting through dental school because it's delayed gratification, right? And, and, and I'd like to, they, they want to relate that to being smarter and whatever. But, but I, I kind of look at this and say, you know, where I'm at in my career now, I want to tell everybody in this room, you've, you've already done that. You've already put in the hard work. I urge you to eat the marshmallow now. And it's not, it's not about punting till later. It's about we're in an ideal circumstance here with implant dentistry. There's an evolution and an opportunity going on with implant dentistry right now. So take it, grab it, seize it, because we're at the right time. And I don't know if in 10 years the implant marshmallow is going to be there. Maybe corporate's going to find a way to grab that too. But my recommendation would be to grab the marshmallow. So is this going to work? Is this what I'm supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know if what we're going to do today is going to work for you and your practice. But what I can tell you is the processes you can plug in place are more likely going to work than they are going to fail. So have the courage to step out on the limb, to do the risk, to do the hard work, to get in front of the right people. And what I've tried to do today is put the right people in front of you. So everyone coming up after you are the people you need to connect with today and learn from your peers. So the goal for this is to put people in a community together of learning and sharing that we can better our lives and better our practices and better our families. So that's the goal for today. I'm going to wrap it up, Jack. I'm sorry I took 20 minutes of your time, but we're going to get back on track. I think that's the end of my slides here today. I will pass it off to uh, Dr. Jack Hahn. He's going to talk about everything. So at this point, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jack Hahn. And uh, thanks for being here today.